Welcome into Rounding the Bases, the podcast about culture and leadership with a baseball twist presented by Community America Credit Union. My guest today has a really cool story, and I got a chance to experience some of it firsthand as well. Max Kaniger grew up in a household surrounded by food. His father is a chef. His parents met in a restaurant. So he he was surrounded by that environment. Barbecues and meals were the things that brought people together. We know that where where I'm at in Kansas City. Uh, But when Max rode his bike around town, it was apparent that some neighborhoods had plenty while others did not. Uh, We'll fast forward a little bit because I want him to be able to tell the story. But he may not have known he was going this direction, but he finds himself back in the food industry in a different way and in a way that I think long-term and short-term for that matter is going to make a major impact in this community. And so I'm really excited right now to bring in to the program to Rounding the Bases, Max Kaniger. And the the name of the organization is Camby's Market. I had a chance to tour it recently, which Max, you and and some of your team, uh, DePriest Taylor uh, and others were able to take me around and it just blew my mind. I didn't know why you guys wanted me to come down there until I saw it. So we're going to try to do as much justice as we can, because I do think it's something that you need to see, but you live there. So, you know, and can describe it better than anyone. First off, welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm doing great, Joel. I really appreciate you, you having me on and, and coming down to, to see this face. It is a little different in person than, than I think most people expect. Okay. Let's start first and foremost with what it is. And then we'll backtrack to how you got here and the growth. There, there's so many lessons, by the way, that I believe in this podcast about scaling, about taking care of people. This isn't just a a simple little, hey, let's make our community better, which of course you guys are. But tell me, uh, what is Canby's? So Canby's Markets is a nonprofit organization working to eliminate food deserts or areas without consistent access to fresh, healthy, and affordable food. And we do that by uh, partnering with small mom and pop corner convenience stores that exist in those neighborhoods um, and help them sell that food. So we bring in all of like the coolers and racks necessary to, to merchandise or put that food on display. Um, and then we also bring in fresh produce seven days a week uh, on consignment. So it's really no risk to them or very low risk because there's never no risk to a small business owner, but uh, low risk to the small business owners. And um, it means we, we can really make sure that they're putting out a, a quality product at an affordable price for the community. Well, it's it's remarkable because there there's so many, as I learned when I visited, there's so many layers to this. I mean, it's not as easy as just saying, hey, let's get healthier food to neighborhoods that haven't had it. And that's where you get into the food deserts. It's not just a simple fix, but yet you guys are suddenly slowly, but surely maybe not as slowly as you thought making an impact. How did you get into this? Uh, well, yeah, it's definitely not been as, as slow as expected. Uh, I think when I when I made that first business plan, I thought it'd take uh, three years to get into nine locations. Um, we're in like that third year now. Um, and we're in a little over 40. So slow, maybe not um, what I was expecting. I got into it just because I did. I grew up in and around food. Like you said, my, my dad is a chef. My aunt's a chef. All family, friends loved food. And I, I love I love food, but I didn't want to be in restaurants that I did. I thought that they worked too hard. Um, so it's, I decided to start a nonprofit. And that also a learning experience um and and for me it it was like the the food aspect of it is is important and it's the tool that i know best um but it's always about the people and and how we can kind of bring people together around a a meal it's always about people no matter what we're talking about and food and people obviously go hand in hand but how, how did that whole thing of not wanting to work as hard as the restaurant business go for you not well, not well. I mean, I'm, I'm here maybe too often. I would be lying if I said I haven't slept on the couch here, but um, I, I'm also lucky because I, I love what I do. And it, it's it's work, but it, sometimes it, it just is, you, you get sucked in and, and you get a lot, it's different than I expected. Well, I, I think because you just hit on something too. Like, I mean, it's one thing to want to take up this cause, and and that in itself is obviously admirable and, and special, but then to be living it too, right? Like, because 
this isn't as simple as, hey, we want to send so-and-so store, mom and pop or, or whatever, uh, a you know, something to help them out. We, we are trying to create something sustainable here, which then has impacts on neighborhoods, on communities, on jobs, uh, on and on. I mean, were you thinking along that scale when this all started? Definitely not when it started. Uh, uh, when I, I think I'm mostly wrong when I start stuff, but I'm one that will throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks and, and willing to be persistent and learn. And I had a lot to learn in the beginning. I knew I wanted to be in this space. I wanted to to help change our food system because it, of all of the big problems out there, it seemed to be the one that was the most fixable. You know, when you look at like the two big problems being we have so much food that goes to waste and yet there are so many hungry people that seem to be kind of a logistics issue. And so a fixable problem. Um, uh, the original idea was actually a grocery store. Um, those are, are, are big and hard and um, nobody in their right mind would fund me to open a nonprofit supermarket. Um, and so it's kind of like learned along the way. And, and I do, I feel like in learning and, and asking questions and asking the people who are living it every day, I spend a lot of time just kind of driving around neighborhoods and talking to people. Um, I, that's how we kind of came to the conclusion that we were going to work with and support the, the corner stores work with, um, cause there are actually hundreds of those corner stores over on the east side that we can work with and, and help support them. Um, and with that, it means that it makes it a lot easier for us to grow really quickly and become that sustainable and trustworthy partner. Um, not something that just shows up one day and then fails really quickly. I want to really build that trust. And I think we have a lot to, we have to earn that over time and, and working towards it and seeing it grow this quickly has just shown how much, you know, listening to people matters. Okay. So let's, let's hit on that a little bit more because I think that trust is, perhaps the most critical element of any culture. And when you're talking about a culture for Canby's Markets, you're not just talking about at your warehouse, at your facility. Mm -hmm. Your culture is going to extend to all of these stores and then to their communities. No different than, say, in baseball, where the culture isn't just the 26 players on the roster or the coaching mm -hmm. staff or the front office. It's the fans. It's everybody that is involved. So that's that's your world right now, too. Mm -hmm. And now, let's be honest here. You are a male, white. Mm -hmm. You can call it like it is. Uh, I don't know, 20s, 30s. 30, unfortunately. but uh, Oh, so old. Let me tell you something. Me. Come on. You got a long ways to go. But uh, that, that's who you are. Mm -hmm. and, and yet you find yourself on a daily basis in communities where you are going to be the one that looks different, that you might be looked at a little bit funny, like, wait a minute, what? why is this guy coming here? Mm -hmm. What is he trying to take advantage of? And you, I know, have built some beautiful relationships in mostly African-American communities where you are trying to make a difference. How have you built that trust? By trusting. I, I mean, uh, somebody's got to go for it. And, and I, I, I fully trust the people around me. And, and I will say, like... Uh, I am at a point now where I'm not doing the deliveries anymore. We've got some wonderful drivers on our team to do that. But I, I still remember like in the beginning when I was doing all the deliveries myself, I, I can't tell you a, a single time that I remember not, like having a, a crate of produce in my hands and walking towards the front door of one of these stores that somebody wouldn't come running in front and be like, hey, man, let me grab that door for you. Let, let me help you out. And and there were definitely some some times that, uh, you know, be early in the morning and, and somebody would maybe, you know, yell some things at me and things. Like, um, but then they would see what I was there to do. And I, there was actually one of the stores we were at where I got called out for, you know, like, what are you doing in the neighborhood? And I was like, I'm just trying to get some work done, you know, moving forward. And uh, as I went back to the truck and grabbed the produce, it, the other guy was like, wait, are you the, the dude who brings the produce? And I was like, yeah, that's me. He was like, oh, my God, my grandma loves that. And they went and helped grab more of the stuff off the truck, out the door. I mean, it was just that relationship, it, you know, it starts with just somebody's got to got to trust. And and I think uh, I have uh, had a lot of privilege in my life. And because of that, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for me to, to trust first and and trust that you know as we build this network of stores that we have to trust that the the neighborhoods that are there are ready and receptive to buy and eat 
fresh, healthy food. Uh, I mean, you know, some of the pushback we got when we started from some of the, the people I went to, to, to try and uh, donate was that people don't know the people in these communities don't know how to eat healthy foods. They don't know what to do. I had to trust that there's just enough people that are ready and willing and waiting um, for this food to sustain us and help build us and get the word out as we grow. And we can start having that conversation because I think that conversation about education and teaching cooking skills has to come after the the food is there. Because it's a vicious cycle, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we want the schools to be better. We want the neighborhoods to be better, but yet nobody's investing in the schools, nobody's giving good food options. Uh, so much of what those of us who grew up or at this point still have privilege have never had to think about before. And so when the only place you can go within walking distance or your neighborhood has a bunch of chips on the shelves and, mm -hmm. and, and all the crap that maybe we mm -hmm. all will eat when we're in a rush, Maybe some of us eat it more than, than not, but we all have other healthier options and sustainable options. And that's what's so often missing, not just in, in neighborhoods in Kansas City, but, but in urban neighborhoods all over this country. So mm -hmm. I, I want to get to what you've heard and the results and where you're going in a moment. But let's, as best as you can, explain how the whole process works as, as the way it works today. I was lucky enough to be able to walk through the whole mm -hmm. facility and see step by step what, what is really a well-oiled machine at this point and one that, that is still growing and you're still learning. But, uh, but there are a lot of lessons there, too, in terms of scaling and efficiency and logistics. But take us through beginning to end from beginning food coming in mm -hmm. to end getting into those stores. Yeah. Um, well, and back out of the store. So our process doesn't end at the mm -hmm. store because um, it, it is it's uh, uh, at the surface level seems really simple. But as you dive more and more into it, the, it gets a little bit more complex. So we get food basically anywhere we can. It is all like a uh, whole uncut fresh produce that we, we stock right now. Um, but we we buy and get donations from local wholesalers. So two of our, our, our biggest partners are Liberty and CNC Produce. Um, CNC, you might actually notice if you're out at the K, I, I'm pretty sure all of the, the produce brought out there is, is by them. And they've been great from the very beginning. Um, but these big, huge wholesalers um, have a lot of food that they have to go through. And so there's a lot that they're able to, to donate to us that is still really high quality stuff, but it wouldn't um, on a big scale meet maybe some of the standards at a grocery store. When they bring it to us, we can have volunteers go through that whole pallet of food and make sure that everything that we pull out of it is still that grocery quality. Um, everything else we either um, compost or we've got some farmers that have like pigs and things like that that we get the food to, um, or if it's um, maybe not grocery quality, but still very good to eat, we try and get that to other uh, nonprofit organizations um, like Community Kitchen and things like that around the city so that they can still make a hot meal out of it that day. Um, the revenue we earn, because um, we do, even though we're a nonprofit, we do keep a portion of the sales from the stores to help us be more sustainable, help keep the lights on. Um, and the, the better we can get um, at earning revenue in the stores, we can also buy more uh, from local farmers. So we do have um, a few local farmers growing for us. We've actually got a few right in the neighborhoods that we are serving that are growing on contracts. So we, we actually paid um, for seeds ahead of time um, so that they could get stuff in the ground and grow just for us. Um, from there, it comes into our warehouse. We, we get it sorted, organized, and um, set up so that we can get it on. We have three different routes now. So we have three trucks that go. Um, our stores are as far north as St. John up in the northeast. Um, we go uh, all out as far south right now as about 130th. Um, and uh, most stores are from Troost and East. We've got one over on um, Southwest Boulevard, um, possibly a second one coming soon uh, as we look to kind of continue to expand. But those trucks go out um, because the stores aren't ordering the food. Uh, we put enough on, on the truck so that uh, the drivers go. We have a set par for every item. So they take inventory every day and they look at if we had 20 lemons in there and there uh, or the par is 20 for lemons and there are five left, then we know we sold 15. 
And if two of those lemons are bad, we actually pull those out and we'll uh, restock to that par. So we'll bring 17 back in. Um, those two lemons that are shrunk, uh, we, we take, we, we manage that responsibility. We bring it back to the warehouse and it's no cost then to that small business owner. Um, drivers kind of repeat that process at, um, every store come back to the warehouse. We unload all of the, the stuff that was shrunk in compost, everything from there. It's an amazing process. And I think one that's so important too, in the sense that there's not a whole lot of risk for these stores. So I know for starters, you were showing me, I mean, there's always risk in everything. I, I get that, but, but you guys are taking a lot of the risk there too. At the same time, you have some control over this in terms of pricing and all of that. So it, ultimately, if everything is going well, again, the, the food business, the restaurant business can always be very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. However, there, it, the way you explained it to me is that there, there's a real joint partnership here between these store owners, mom and pop store owners and Canby's Markets Tell me about that and the importance, too, of getting them not just the food, but the proper equipment and the ability to be able to to keep this produce fresh. Yeah. So we do. We, we buy the refrigeration for them and we manage that. So if anything goes wrong with it, that's on us. So trying to absolutely make this as low lift as possible for them, um, I, I feel as a small business owner that everybody there's enough that you got to deal with in any given day. So if, if I'm trying to, to bring our product to their stores, then I want to make it as easy as possible. Um, and we want to make it something that, that has a good return. Um, so our, our goal per store is just 500 bucks a week. Um, with that $500 a week, um, a lot of the stores would be able to like pay their rent for the year based on just our, our sales. So, I mean, the store's cut of that um, can be nearly $10,000 a year per store, which at scale could be, you know, my, my hope is to be in about 300 of these stores on the east side here in the next few years. Um, and that would mean actually millions of dollars in revenue generated for small businesses on the east side. And that's kind of the goal is to, to kind of help lift them up. Um, the consignment aspect of it is the way I kind of looked into doing that. Um, Cause I also wanted to be able to, to contain or control the product. Maybe that's a little bit of my own issue, but um, by having it on consignment, it means that we get to still control uh, quality and price. So I can make sure that just because this is the only fresh produce around that it's still something that you, would match anything in any other grocery store. It's still something that I'm proud to put on the shelves. It's still something that just because you're shopping at one of these stores doesn't mean you have to um, settle for anything else. What have been, what type of responses, you know, once you got past the building the trust and Hey, why are you here? And mm -hmm. look, that, that happens anywhere. I mean, anytime somebody new shows up, whether they look different or not, Hey, that, especially in, in, communities where everybody knows everybody and suddenly there's a stranger walking in. So you got past that. You, you, you learned how to convince everybody that, Hey, I, I I'm here. Um, he, here's what we're doing. Are you interested? And, and, and you start small and it's growing and it's growing. What are you hearing from the communities and from the, the mom and pop store owners who, who maybe, uh, who maybe their lives or their routines have changed a little bit? Uh, we, 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 we hear a lot of love. Uh, it, it just is, I mean, that's, I guess, the best part uh, about doing this is, um, you know, constantly getting to, like, talk to the the, the drivers coming back, the, the, the different stories that they hear and tell all the time um, can make no matter what's going on in a day better. Uh, and I, I do, I try and um, get out on the trucks with them as often as I can and, and getting, because I don't have to actually restock the produce. That means while I'm riding around on the truck, it means I just get to hang out and talk to the, the um, people behind the counter or people coming in to shop the stores. And, and it is the, 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 you know, stories from as small as like, I, I've never actually eaten that before. Uh, I mean, I still remember because we, we, put corn in and it's corn on the cob and it's still in the husk. And there was a guy who uh, had never actually seen corn, not in a can before. So I had to like actually peel the husk back and show him like, no, this is, this is corn. He'd only seen it in a can, the little yellow things, not a kind of a green 
thing that we had. And, and so getting to like, kind of be like, actually here, take, just have, have a bunch, go home, you know, here's, here's how I would cook it. it if you want to give it a try uh, and tell me what you think. Um, or here, there's uh, one of the stores we have uh, off Independence Avenue. There was a guy who was walking in and um, he started like asking if he could like order ahead because sometimes we would, um, the cooler would have been empty by the time he got there. And so we started like leaving stuff extra for him. And I found out that he was actually cooking for like everybody um, like on his floor at the apartment across the street. And it's because he was the one that could walk over and, and shop. And he met some of his neighbors that he'd never known before and really got to like know everybody there. And they all started just being closer together. Mm -hmm. It's so heartwarming. It's so powerful. I'm sure it's what keeps you going every day as you want to scale. So I want to ask you about scaling before I get to the baseball theme questions. And tell me about the process of, of scaling. I think one of the great elements to your setup is the fact that you have the space to be able to take on all of this food. You, you have all the refrigeration to be able to, to buy this in bulk so that it's not going bad. And, and again, that's a little bit of the risk, if, if you want to call it that, where you're not putting that off on them. You're, you're, you're doing everything you can to make this work, and you have the facilities for that and room to grow when you get to those 300 stores. So tell me about the scaling process, because that's the, that's the tricky part. Well, yeah, that's that. Um, actually, I think it was my mom who told me, but it was it that was it a Dayton Moore quote from a while ago? Like, where, it, you know, I'm, of course, I'm trying to like, eliminate food deserts, or of course, we're trying to win the World Series, but we do that by winning today. Uh, and so doing today right, doing today well is how I want to scale. But but that vision is it's it's the 300 stores here. We're actually lucky enough. We received a, a grant from Triscuit to um, build out a playbook um, so we can try and replicate this in other cities across the country. Um, so that's I still think we have a lot to learn on how we do it here. But now we have some um, direction on how we really put thought behind creating something that's easy to replicate and, and scale and go as far as it needs to go and just keep going and going and, and i think that there'll be room to grow forever <laughs> i mean you'll never fully eliminate but maybe you will but but there'll always be room for improvement that's the beauty yeah. of it is you can keep going and going that's like you know if if we can fix the access part if we can make it so that there is fresh healthy and affordable food available in every single neighborhood then we can tackle the next problem and the next one and the next, because there's always going to be something, but right. uh, I think access and making sure that there is that kind of choice there uh, is a fixable problem. And that that's step one. The website for anyone that wants to learn uh, about Cambies is cambiesmarkets.org, K-A-N-B-E-S, cambiesmarkets.org. Here are the baseball theme questions. First one, biggest home run that you have hit in your career or with Canby's markets? Ooh, um, outside of right now on this podcast. Cause I think that outside this, of this podcast, this, yeah, this is, this is just a small hit. Come on. This is, this is the top so far. Um, I, I would honestly say the finding this warehouse. So we, we were, we, I had been looking for, it was a part of the plan. We always knew we'd need a warehouse. Um, so since 2018 have been looking for a space. Our initial warehouse was actually a truck. I bought a 24 foot box truck because I couldn't afford a warehouse and I needed both. Um, we, at the beginning of 2020, actually, so we moved into this space in January of last year. And had we not, I think because of the pandemic, we, we wouldn't have necessarily made it. I mean, if I only had one truck and had to do everything out of that, uh, we wouldn't have been able to react and adapt and, and grow the way we needed to last year. So finding a space that was uh, definitely a, a risk. It's one of those that, you know, you took a step not being fully sure if your feet are going to land. Um, uh, 15,000 square feet and, and not a small amount of, of rent each month. Um, but it's it's paid off and we've actually now um, doubled and taken over the whole building. And so now we have the whole 30,000 square feet and and are really excited about some of the, the future programs that we have, have planned. Yeah, and a lot of room for growth. As you grow, there's more space that is waiting for that moment. How about a swing and a miss, and what did you learn from it? Ooh, uh, also, I think I mostly miss. I think that, that's a big lesson I've learned over the past few years is uh, it's mostly swings and misses. Uh, I think, you know, if, if 
we we hit it. It's it's wonderful, but I expect to miss. I think the the biggest one also came last year um, during the pandemic because we just moved into this space. Um, it was a place that we had planned to grow into that first fifteen thousand square feet over five years, and we started filling it in the first couple months. Uh, I, I was I think taking on too much, and so really learning how to how to say no to things because because our heart's in it, because everybody on this team has their heart in it. Um, there were quite a few things that we did last year that were over extensions. Um, one of them we eventually did kind of back out of was with the USDA even. It was a huge program, a wonderful opportunity um, with these farm to families food boxes that uh, we were distributing. We, we moved over a million pounds of food in just a few months last summer. And uh, but it got to a point that I was I could see that it was really um, wearing down the team and that they were getting pulled in too many different directions. And, and so we had to, to let go of that one. And the last baseball theme question, small ball, the little things that add up to the big wins, the big home runs. What are what are the little things that mean most to you? What is small ball? Oh, we well, we are we are very much a small ball organization. Like I said, we we start small and we you know we we aim small. We we go for it's all about the little details. But I would say that it, it's the the relationships with people. I mean, something that um, I've really wanted to reinforce now as we bring on drivers and, and add, add them to the team is that yeah, yes, we are a food company. Your your job really is to go in and restock this cooler. You hit those bars and then you move on. Uh, but that's not the job. The job is the people. And so actually when we hire somebody and we start training um, the first two days of training, when they're along for a ride with the other driver, they don't do anything with the food. I don't want them to look at the cooler. I don't even care if they know where the cooler is in the store. I want them to go in and go up to the uh, guy working behind the cash register or girl working behind the and spend that whole 15 minutes talking to them, talk to the, you know, the, the customers as they're coming into the stores. Cause that might seem like a little detail, but it, that part of the relationship is what's most important. It's huge. That's so important in any profession to be able to start with that. That's what opens up all mm -hmm. of the doors. There's no question about it. Four final questions as we round the bases. The first one, I'll start you off nice and easy here. Okay. You, you, you didn't have to come home. You could have stayed in Hawaii. You went to Maui and you were a tour director or a tour guide or, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about that experience and, and how it impacted you. Uh, I think that experience was a turning point for me in my life. I, I grew up here, um, grew up in Brookside, right by uh, Brookside Park. Um, so grew up very much the like idyllic sandlot bring upbringing, but I'd also like never left the Midwest. So I'd been here in landlocked my whole life and uh, about halfway through my sophomore year uh, at Mizzou, I had to leave um, and I just had to get out and picked the furthest place that I thought my parents would let me get away with. And so I just, I packed a bag and, and moved to, to Maui and fell in love and I'm still very much in love with that island. Um, but it was also an opportunity to, to get a job that I knew nothing about. I did nothing. I'd never been to Hawaii and actually within the first few hours of being there, I gave my first tour. Um, so I was giving a tour to people who had actually been on the island longer than me. Um, so kind of learning to roll with the punches a little bit there, but it also gave me an opportunity to really grow in seeing how to run a business. It was a small company. And, and so I got to take a, on a more leadership role pretty quickly and, and really see what it takes to turn a, a business around and, and make it successful. Um, and also how important it is to, to work with the people around you. And again, relationships, right? Building those connections yeah. with, with those guests and then getting to know mm -hmm. them a little bit, which, which any tour guide, if they're good, there's mm -hmm. some bad ones out there too, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the good ones know how to connect mm -hmm. with yeah, people. Yeah, it was a very good tour guide. It was a fun, and I would still highly recommend anybody going to Maui doing the like downhill bike tours from Haleakala. It's, it's a lot of fun. It sounds like a lot of fun. I got to check that one out. Okay. Second question. We'll go from Maui to, well, a former president that lived in Hawaii, or at least we'll talk about mm -hmm. his wife, but there, there's been a, a little bit of an attachment, I guess, with, with Michelle Obama. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, that little teeny tiny attachment, um, but I will take it and I will ride the very, very far coattail. But, um, so that uh, Triscuit grant that I mentioned, um, so we are... Um, 
just recently announced as one of their change makers. And the person that announced just before us was, yeah, Michelle Obama and um, her, the Partnership for a Healthy America. Um, they, they were the first recipient of this award on Ellen's show. And uh, we came out next. So feel very, very, very fortunate to be following in, in those footsteps. It's pretty cool. I mean, it is. And there's a lot of clout to that, too, because we know that that a name like that draws a lot of attention. You happen to be right next to it. I mean, that's that's probably yeah. not something you could have envisioned when you started all of this dream about it. But I definitely don't think it actually happened. Absolutely. And so that was going to be my third question to you about dreams. What what are your big dreams right now? Uh, just just that one, just uh, to uh, eliminate food deserts. I, I really, I do, I think it's possible. And I, uh, I think that the opportunity to build something, uh, you know, that I it was just an idea a few years ago, it, it's still weird to me pulling into the parking lot here and seeing it full of, of cars and, and being able to then walk through a warehouse and all of these people are, are working together on, on this idea. And, and that it really could come together and, and actually happen. And Kansas City could be the first city in history to have equal and equitable access to fresh, healthy, and affordable food. It's amazing. It's inspiring. How many people now uh, on, on your busiest day, how many people do you have at the warehouse? Or how many, how many employees overall? Uh, we're, we're just under 30 employees now which is also weird because last year uh, in January, we were three. So mm -hmm. it, it's been yeah. growth. Mm -hmm. Scaling fast. Okay. I want to, I want to wrap it up with my walk off mm -hmm. question. I'm going to put you on the spot here. You, you may need to think about it. Maybe not. There's probably a bunch of them, but whether it be your early moments of going and visiting these stores, you still pop in a little bit and, and know who all these people uh, are the, the, the hardworking owners and, and those with dreams themselves is there one story, again, I think there are probably a lot, that just moved you or said to you, yeah, this is why I'm doing that. Or, you, you know, you're, you're, you're knee deep in the trenches and you are getting to know so many of these dreamers and so many of these small business owners who are looking to make it and you're playing a small part in that, maybe a big part in it. Is there a story, a family, a person that stood out to you? Uh, nailing it down to just one isn't po possible, but uh, you know, I've got like, like, you know, three of, I think my, my favorite people that, that are four, oh, it's just going to keep going. But like, yeah. um, one of the store owners, um, uh, Babir, uh, who owns the fav trips, um, that maybe people will have seen around town, um, is, is an incredible business owner. And so actually getting to learn a little bit about, what it's like run, like back behind the scenes running some of these stores he has been you know so open so candid so just clear and direct about this is something that actually will be beneficial to somebody else in my position this is something that it might sound good to you but it really doesn't make a difference to us here's you know so that kind of directness on on the business side has been wonderful um there was uh two different store uh counter like clerks or managers um one uh abraham who is still the bet he still texts me randomly and he's the type that will call me on my my shit occasionally where you know he'll he'll text me a picture of the cooler if it's you know if it's only two o'clock in the afternoon and it's already empty he'll text me and be like what am i supposed to do for the other three hours four hours mm -hmm. five hours what are we doing here and and i i really appreciate but all love um he actually the other day as it was getting hot again he sent in a bunch of um those like gatorade water bottles um uh, actually with the little royals logo on it he he had the driver bring like 20 of them back so that all of the other drivers and staff here could have one. Um, and then there's uh, Cynthia or, or mama as people knew her. Um, she was at the store overall, another store off of like Brooklyn Avenue um, where there was a day I was in there kind of restocking and um, she just kind of needed a, a quick break. She's like, Hey, I'm just going to walk out for a break real quick. 
left the whole store empty with me in there. Uh, uh, this person comes into shop, they go grab a few things and they go up and they're like, Hey, where, where's mama at? And I'm like, actually, she just went out for a break real quick. And he's like, all right, well tell her, you know, and I, I forget the person's name now. I'm um, like, tell her I came in and he left like a, a 10 just on the counter. Um, she came back in. She's like, who left it? Told him her name. And uh, she's like, all right, just ha- marked it down. Like I'll give him the change next time. And there was that like, real relationship there that she trusted fully that she could walk out of the store and it'd be fine. And then the person who came in trust, like it was like, Oh, she'll give me my change. We know, we know each other. Um, it'll work out. And then the last one would have to be just cause I know you asked for one, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't follow. Okay. Uh, would actually be um, Miss Kathy, the one who was at the very, very first store. Um, so I, she was the one who ran that store and is still like an angel to me. Um, but the owner who I had been talking to actually hadn't told her that I was coming. So day one of, of this business, and I'm so excited. I've got the cooler in the back of the truck. It's loaded up. I pull in first thing in the morning uh, to unload and start getting things all set up. And I show up and she's like, who are you? You can't come. That's not coming in here. I'm not dealing with that. You can't do it. I'm like, what? I've been been working towards having like this is a plan can we and she finally like acquiesced and we talked to the owner and you, we brought it in but she was not having it one bit um and now uh, you know if, 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 if i could call her up right now and she would i think do just about anything for me and 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 like has become just a, a saving grace but and you know it's it's that kind of relationship that yeah that that's and i asked you not necessarily expecting one but storytelling that's what paints the picture Mm -hmm. because now walking through your facility that obviously helped me but when you start hearing the individual stories that's Mm -hmm. what you know that that that's where it's at and those stories maybe didn't happen right away and you build those relationships and that trust Mm -hmm. as you talked about you jumped in first uh, it's it's all beautiful. It really is. And it'll continue to grow and be beautiful. There'll be bumps along the road. There always are. But I, I know that it is it is heading in a great direction and the ultimate dream of ending food deserts in Kansas City and beyond. The website, again, for everybody, I encourage everybody just to check it out. It's really, really powerful. Cambysmarkets.org, K-A-N-B-E-S, Cambysmarkets.org. If you search for Cambys on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, follow them. You, you'll see all the same uh, under Camby's Markets there too. Uh, Max Kaniger, uh, Maxfield Kaniger, the, for the official uh, mm-hmm. official name, has been my guest. Camby's Markets continued growth, success to you and all of your team. Uh, I want to shout out to Deprice Taylor again because she's the one that said, "Hey, Joel, you have got to tell this story." Um, I know she's um, with Centurion. She works for you, and she has mm-hmm. been. Uh, a power player with all of this as well. But Max, thanks so much for spending the time. Keep up the great work. Yeah, thank you, Joel. I really appreciate it.